Hey friends, Peggy Hall back with you from the healthyamerican.org. We have helped so many students that are in nursing school who are being denied the access to their clinicals, which are an essential part of them completing the program. And that's where they go and they spend time in different facilities. It could be a pediatric location, any type of specialty where they are going to fulfill their requirements to actually graduate from nursing school. And all along, these individuals have been allowed to attend classes without becoming a human pincushion, without violating their God-given religious beliefs and their God-given right to practice as they would like to worship. And then at the very end, right when they're at the final stage, that's where they literally put on the pressure, meaning the administration puts on the pressure and begins to intimidate, harass, coerce, and pressure these young adults into doing something to their body that they don't want to do. I want to tell you about what we've been doing here at The Healthy American. Now, listen, even if you're not a nursing school school student, this is important for you to hear because it is about standing up for what is right, standing for your convictions, and whether it is at a nursing uh, school setting, whether it is at your employer, whether you want to travel, whether you're trying to get medical care, a lot of these same principles are at work. I get emails day in, day out, all day, every day from people that are being pressured to do something in the way of participating with some type of medical intervention that they object to, that they do not give consent to. So I wanna tell you how to stand strong, share with you some of these success stories because heaven knows there's so much bad news out there. Let's focus on the positive, shall we? And this is a sponsored show. So I'm gonna bring a message from the sponsor. Stick with me as we go right on over to threeharmfulfoods.com. I thought this was such a great message for today since we are talking about medical settings and we need people who are rational and clear thinking in the medical field. So I encourage them to continue their studies. Anyway, this is a message from Dr. Amy Lee. It is actually, I want to give you the website here. I don't know why that changed. It is actually, you're going to go to threeharmfulfoods.com slash Peggy, and that's where you can watch this video from Dr. Amy Lee. And she tells us that we live in the most advanced era in human history with all sorts of medical breakthroughs. So why in the world are we still seeing people that are obese, they are unhealthy, and it seems like more than ever. So according to US board certified physician and expert nutritionist, Dr. Amy Lee says that one of the main reasons is these three harmful foods that are being passed off as health foods. And uh, it happens all over the country. Now, these foods can cause you to gain weight. They can clog your digestive tract. They can deplete your energy. They can wreck your skin. And they're even banned in other countries. So why are they still legal in the U.S.? So Amy Lee is going to shine a light on that for you. Again, it's a free video that you can find over at 3harmfulfoods.com slash Peggy, you'll learn about the side effects of these foods that are wreaking havoc on the health of millions of Americans. But the good news is you can reverse this damage by simply learning which foods to avoid and how to spot them. That way you'll experience easier weight loss, smoother digestion, and vibrant energy. Sounds great to me. So again, find out about these three fake foods with this free video that Dr. Amy Lee created threeharmfulfoods.com slash Peggy. You don't want to be duped by these foods. Again, I'll also have a link for you in the description box below. Friends, talk about being duped and bamboozled and hoodwinked and pressured and coerced and intimidated. Imagine this, you are a young adult embarking on your chosen profession. You've invested time, money, and I'm talking about uh, in terms of time, years of study. And now you're at the final phase of your completion of your studies and the doors are being closed on you. That's exactly what is happening to these individuals that are coming to us for help. Now, I will tell you, right off the bat, we've had a hundred percent success rate. I have not heard from any nursing students that have been denied following our strategies and protocol. I don't want to give away everything because some of this might be, um, gotten into the wrong hands of these attorneys that are using slimy tactics to try to shut the door on individuals who are simply exerting their rights. Now, I can speak from experience because for the last four years, my husband, Pastor David, and I have helped thousands and thousands and thousands of individuals stand by their convictions and give no consent to these imposed medical interventions that they object to. And listen, you don't need to be a Christian. You don't need to even be a 
person of faith, you don't have to attend any church. There are laws that protect you based on your ethical and moral objections, as well as your religious beliefs. All of that falls under the umbrella of a religious protection. And we've even helped atheists get through this process because it's all based on your belief system, which would be described by courts have described your you know, ethical and moral views if they are equal to those who hold a religious belief in that your everyday choices your are guided by these principles. Now, it's not always easy for people to express what they believe. And that's where we come in handy because we know the pitfalls that are set up by, as I say, these individuals that are trying to strong arm people into doing what they don't want to do. So it is so heart-wrenching to me, especially with the young adults. And they go after particularly college students, those in the medical professional profession, or those who are involved in studies that are leading to a professional career, whether it be in nursing, we've had we helped medical students. There are those that are going through, um, you know, phys, uh, it's uh, physical therapy training, and they have come to us because they are being coerced and intimidated by these institutions. And the good news is you are protected by law. I'm going to share a couple of these success stories with you, but I want you to think about these despicable intimidation factors. And I want you to turn the tables on the tyrants and take the conversation away from whether or not you are a human pincushion or a pure blood and take it into the realm of other things that you don't want to do with your body. Imagine if these medical schools had a requirement that men be castrated. Well, you know what? There are a lot of medical schools that would love that because that's exactly what they're pushing because they have these, you know, centers to help confused people cut off their God-given parts and thus become infertile and, dare I say, no longer able to participate in the uh, beautiful um, relations that married people enjoy. I'll just put it delicately that way. Can you imagine? So that's what people are being faced with in terms of being forced to do something with their body that they don't consent to. Imagine that a company or in this case, a nursing school, had a policy that they did not accept uh, pregnant women. And that if you were pregnant, not only uh, could you not continue with your studies, but in order to do so, you had to have an abortion. That these institutions are forcing you to uh, kill your developing baby. How is that any different than these schools or your employer or a medical setting forcing you to participate in an unwanted medical intervention of participating in a product that's going to be introduced into your body. In my view, there is no difference. It is against your own rights. And that's what we have been doing for the last several years. Now we have so many free videos here on YouTube and uh, at the backup channels over at Rumble and BitChute and also at my private vault, PeggyHall.tv. Uh, some of those are a little bit out of date because our strategies and approach, uh, these have actually developed over the years, knowing what we're faced with, with these schools. And I'll tell you, they pull out every trick in the book. And here's the reason why. They don't want someone to be the domino that causes the fall of all the other dominoes. Meaning if one person is successful in not in objecting and not consenting to these imposed uh, ridiculous requirements of having to do these things with your body against your will, then it seems like these institutions are concerned that other people are going to also say, hey, I don't want any part of this either. And I know that because there have been people that have come to me that have said, Peggy, I wanted to fight and I didn't know how. I felt like I was the only person standing up for my rights. But when I found out about you and I learned about others that were at my workplace or that were standing up for what they believed, it gave me the conviction to stand up and have the courage for my conviction. So that's why these institutions don't want the word to get out that you can be exempt from these illegal, immoral, unethical, unthinkable, illegitimate requirements. Now, the other reason they do it is because they went along with it and they want you to suffer as well. And I find that doubly despicable. It's one thing if they actually believe that these medical interventions are 
necessary and effective and helpful, I mean, I will pray for them to learn more about what apparently has been hidden from them, although all of us figured it out, but maybe they didn't want to do the deep digging or the work or what have you. But I think what's even more despicable is those who know that this is not something that should be forced upon you, but because it was forced upon them and they had to do it, they don't want to suffer alone. So they are going to impose it upon you. It's almost like a power struggle. And it's absolutely despicable. And I've been fighting against this from day one, along with my husband and Olivia, who is a very uh, important part of our team. So I want to bring with you some of these success stories. And this is why it's important to you personally. Imagine, and you may not have to imagine, you may have actually gone through this, where you were trying to get medical care and you would not uh, they would not see you unless you participated in the suffocation device, which was against your desire and perhaps against your religion. And you may realize medically that it was a bad idea to restrict your re breathing and breathe in your own germs and all of that stuff. And imagine you were being forced to participate in that or you wouldn't be seen. I know that you've gone through that or someone you know has gone through that. And that's not even the worst of it. Imagine that you're being denied medical care because you won't undergo the nasal Schwab assault, as I so enduringly call it, and or you are not a human pincushion, and they're telling you that you are a risk to others. Now, I did a video on this a few days ago, but some of y'all were so distracted by a bandage that I had on my neck, you couldn't focus on the topic at hand. So I think I will redo that video. And I don't blame you. You're like, what, what's going on there, Peggy? Just a little cat scratch on my kitty cat. Anyhow, I, I want to go over this again and again, because it's so very important for you to understand how to stand up for yourself. It may not be a situation you're in today, but I promise you, someone you know is suffering and going along with this because they're not educated. So I beg of you to share this video with others and to share my uh, you know, website and other information so that people can learn how to have the courage to stand by their convictions. Now, when it comes to these medical settings, the reason why it's important that we help these young adults who are embarking on their profession, it's important that we help them stand up because they may be the one who is the gatekeeper who is going to prevent you from seeing your loved one unless you're wearing the suffocation device or undergo the nasal Schwab assault or become a human pincushion. We need rational-minded, clear-thinking individuals who believe and stand for personal liberty, individual choice. That's all we're asking. You want to go get these interventions again and again and again and again because they're, they're so effective. Apparently, you need several of them. You want to do that? Go be my guest. Just like you want to get a tattoo, you want to smoke, you want to drive a Harley. You know what? I know plenty of healthy Americans who do all those things and God bless them. That's your choice. But I don't want to do that. So that's my choice. That's all I'm standing for. And that's all you're standing for as well. I, I imagine by the comments and by your own sophistication, you're not trying to impose your will on someone else. So we need to fight for these medical students. Part of me wanted to tell them, you know what, just quit nursing school. Why do you want to deal with all that anyway? For the rest of your career, you're going to be hounded to get the flu shot and everything else that they're trotting out, the, the TB test. And I've talked about that before. You can request a non-invasive screening where they're not going to be injecting you with a little bit of TB and then testing you later to see if you have it. You can do a non-invasive screening where they ask questions, they ask about your history, or you can also do a blood draw. I personally am not in favor of that, but it's your choice. So part of me wants to tell these nursing professionals and others in the medical field, why are you even participating in this? But then I realize they have a right to pursue their dreams. They, they have a right to go to these classes just like anyone else. And what they need to do, and here is where the uh, doors are opened, is when these students are being told that the doors are closing because the clinical sites will not accept them as a student. And that is a lie. And I know that because we've had several success stories. So the individual nursing students need to work with their own program coordinator, or there may be other names depending on where they're going to school, but there is someone who oversees the nursing program. And there may be a clinical site coordinator, and you deal with that person and you tell them, look, 
I will deal with the clinical sites with you or without you, but I know that these clinical sites are required to accommodate me. Otherwise, that would be like saying we don't allow pregnant women to go to these clinical sites. We don't allow someone in a wheelchair to become a nurse. You know what? I don't think that's true because there are laws that protect you from being discriminated against based on your medical status, your age, your race, your gender. Yes, all two of them. And your religious beliefs, if I didn't mention that already. I had a healthy American tell me in the chat that she has a 78-year-old friend who is going through nursing school. So you cannot be discriminated against because of your age. But they're trying to tighten the screws based on the medical condition, which is not a pincushion. It's illegal. So you take the conversation away from jabbed or unjabbed. You put it into the conversation of these are my ethical, moral, or religious beliefs. You leave out all of the medical issues and the science and the testing and the lack of evidence for efficacy and all of that. You leave that aside. It has nothing to do with ethical, moral, or religious beliefs. And again, we have a track record of helping people express their beliefs in a way that is not going to trigger these denials. We've had so many great success stories, and I want to share with you just a, a handful of them. And it seems like we had a whole bunch come in recently, I think because of the time of year, they're getting ready to finish up their program and have their graduation. So we've got Kate, and she is in Florida, and she got her waiver with our uh, approach and our strategies. And she just told us uh, recently, I think we heard from her um, April 26, we got the good news that she was accepted. Then we have a dad who is working with us quite uh, closely for his daughter's accommodation. And she had her accommodation approved, which means she can go to these clinical sites without becoming a human pincushion. And they are required to accommodate her. And the bottom line, what we always recommend is this simple accommodation, which is I will self-screen for symptoms of illness. And if I'm sick, I will stay home. Because isn't that a stronger position to be in than to wear the suffocation device in case you have some kind of flu or cold, which we still don't know whether or not you know, they're contagious. Oh, well, uh, excuse me. I wanted to say that if the CDC says that it is, then it is, <laughs> of course. And if the FDA say it is, then it, it says it is, of course. And if the WHO says it is, uh, YouTube requires me to follow all of the WHO guidelines. I'm going to be bringing you another video about the WHO and why I'm not afraid of the WHO. And I recommend that you not be afraid either because fear is a way of controlling you. And I don't care for all of the alarmists. So I've broken this down over the last couple of years and I will continue to do so, friends, because it really troubles me when people tell you the sky is falling. And when the earth is spinning and guess what? It's not happening. You don't have to live in fear and dread. But the point being, there are ways of getting around these requirements. And there are agencies that also uh, oversee nursing student nursing programs. And these are areas where you can file complaints. You can file complaints with the institution itself. They all have non-discrimination offices and it's illegal to discriminate against you. And if you don't wanna go the religious route, you can go the medical route. And if you have a condition which is called unjabbed, they cannot discriminate against you. That would be like telling you cannot be a nurse if you have AIDS. It's illegal and you need to use these same arguments. So let me give you a couple others. We've got several that are coming in here. Amber got, um, uh, is a mom that helped her son and he is getting his hours in the urgent uh, health care as an independent uh, practitioner. And they've lined up the second half of clinicals and there are no issues there. And she said, thank you so much. We were able to settle anything, uh, everything without compromising his beliefs. The fact is, friends, these institutions don't have a legal leg to stand on. Here's uh, another one. We've got, we're helping people with their immigration status. And um, we have been doing this again and again and again. And it is never too late, even if you have become, if you fell under their pressure and their coercion and their intimidation, 
it is so heartbreaking when people come to us and say, Peggy, I didn't want to do it, but I didn't know what to do. I wanted to continue with my studies or I wanted to keep my job or I wanted to travel or I wanted to get this medical procedure and I caved and I feel horrible about it. And now I have to go back and they want me to be tested again or they want me to get the second um, procedure, the second intervention, second cocktail, and I don't want to do it. Friends, we've helped people who got not one and not and 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 who got two and then wanted to deny or stop and object to the third and the fourth and the fifth. And we helped them. They even have a stronger position to stand on because they can tell that through their God-given conscience, they no longer want to participate in this. So I am here to bring you hope and a way out of it. I promise you, they are not going to stop. They're pushing the flu cocktail, and it's going to be everything else. For these young adults that are in school, they want them to have the MMR and the Tdap and all of these other things that are like childhood diseases, and these are no longer children. There also, if you didn't know, is a cocktail schedule for adults. And I don't know that much about it because I don't participate in any of it, but let me know in a comment if you would like me to go over that whole listing and let you know, you know, what you might be able to do if you want to say no consent. In most cases, I think in all cases, in every case, you have a right. In every case, you have a right of no consent. And I want to help you stand strong and develop the courage to stand by your convictions. I also want to remind you that I'm here to help you through your loss, through your grief, through your frustration, your anger, your outrage, your regret, your sorrow, whatever you have been dealing with over these last, last several years, and your stories are so heart-wrenching. And I want to help you find and build a new life after loss. It is possible. I'll have all the details for you in the description box below. I've got a video that I will link for you also called Life After Loss, where I go into detail. As of today's airing, the program starts tomorrow, which is May 9th. It runs through the entire month of March. Every Thursday for 90 minutes, we start, if you're on the West Coast, it's 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. If you're on the East Coast, it's 4 to 5.30. If you're in Central or Mountain, you'll have to figure it out. I'm sorry. I don't know all of that, but join us. The program is recorded. It's private. It is not aired publicly. It is confidential. The information stays there. You don't have to come on screen or even share your story if you don't want to, but we are building a support group to help you get through whatever it is you are struggling with. You may have had a loss of a job, of a pet, just a loss of liberty, of a way of life. I think so many of us have been traumatized. And I realize in the comments and the emails that I get when people email support at thehealthyamerican.org, so much of our interaction is still being driven by this trauma. And it's time for us to move through it and to find smoother sailing and brighter days ahead. And I am here to help you every step of the way. Check out the links below. Be sure you subscribe to the Substack and hop on board. I know that you will find healing and a way to live even with all of the upset that we've had, I promise you there is a new life out there for you and I want to help you find it.